Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Zwift Community Live broadcast of the Coach Hendy workout today. We do have Greg Henderson with us here today. Multi-time Tour de France rider, uh, world champion in multiple respects, as well as Commonwealth Games champion, 11 World Cup medals. Great to have Coach Hendy with us. Thanks a lot for joining us. And we're going to get right on in to the workout today. So, uh, Greg, it looks like today we've got the Dan Martin mixer that you're going to put me through some torturous four by 10 <laughs> intervals today. What's, uh, what's this workout all about as uh, we start getting into the warm up here and just real quick, just so everybody knows this is a workout we have loaded into Zwift. Uh, we went ahead and downloaded it from Greg. You can actually find it on our Facebook and uh, download it for yourself. Jump, put it right on into Zwift, into your documents and into the workouts file for, uh, for Zwift. We will have some more information on how to do that as soon as possible with a lead in video. But uh, let's go ahead and get right into it as I warm up. Greg, welcome to the broadcast. And how do we, uh, how am I going to do this? What's this all about? Oh, hold on one sec, Greg. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Give me one second. Your audio. You killed your audio so that we would have things. There we go. You know, Greg, go right ahead. Yeah, so today it's a um a pretty specific climbing exercise. It's uh it's one where you've got to change the rhythm of your climbing. You've got to um you know, you've got to get in and out of your saddle, which can be, you know, quite upsetting to the rhythm when you're climbing. Uh so a little bit more power out of the seat, a little bit more power, less power when you're seated. And uh, it's it's something you'll notice if you if you watch um, the likes of Dan Martin when he climbs. He's always in and out of the seat because he's he can switch up he can switch up that cadence, he can switch up that rhythm. It can upset a lot of other riders that are used to to riding at just a constant pace. So it's a it's a very specific climbing exercise today and and it'll work a lot on your uh, you know your functional threshold power too. You're working right at right at that power where you know you're accumulating just the, the amount of lactate that you accumulate is very very close to the amount of lactate that you can uh that you can clear so it's, it'll be a difficult effort okay gotcha gotcha so um looks like pushing over threshold at times and then coming under pushing over and coming under i did set my threshold a little bit lower <laughs> just to give <laughs> Everybody, did, uh, before the workout, before the workout, Greg was like, "Hey Nathan, you might want to just like bring that down just a, <laughs> just a little bit, so we can communicate a little bit throughout the workout." So it sounds like this is a difficult workout. Uh, one it, minute, mate, you've got under, a, you've got a threshold of five hundred watts. <laughs> you want to you want to lower it, mate? When you've got a threshold of five hundred, it's gonna, it's going to be at the half day. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Now we're buffing Nathan up. So if you guys want to bring uh, any kind of questions or comments into the broadcast today, you can do so and interact directly with uh, myself and Greg Henderson uh, by tweeting at Z Community Live, at Z Community Live. And go ahead and see right here how Greg uh, showed you how to do that. Come and log in. And just have a chat and questions if you don't feel like joining at Coach Hendy at Z Community Live. Uh, use the Twitter handles at Z Community Live and at Coach Hendy. And you'll be able to bring your questions right on in. We also have uh, the Facebook integrated as well. So if you do, if you are watching and hanging out over at the Facebook, we can bring in your comments and questions there as well and uh, Greg will be able to answer them. And during my 10 minute efforts, I have a feeling it's gonna be Greg interacting and me just clicking that over as much as possible to bring those back in here. Uh, so when you're preparing for this, I was actually thinking about this workout a lot today um, and yesterday a little bit coming into it. And I was wondering, how do I prepare? You know, I, I mean, I've been racing for a long time and I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to get my body ready for intervals. I know that intervals take a certain type of exercise system. Maybe just walk us through that a little bit, Greg. Like, because of the type of inter exercise system 
that FTP takes and the kind of fuel that you're burning, burning. How do I prepare best for uh, doing this kind of workout? Yeah, so last week we did the, uh, the sprint workout there, the Grifle Special, and you can see it was a, a lot, um, lot different type of interval. Very like 10 seconds of, of high power, high cadence, and then long recovery. So you've, um, you know, you're really working on that explosive power. Whereas, whereas today we're going to work on that that sustainable power. That's that power right at where it's super uncomfortable, but you know you could probably hang on for a long time at, at that pace. So yeah, it's it's all about the fuel substrate in which you're using. It's a uh, it's a different energy system, like you said. So you know, the correct fueling is is very vital also. So I mean, it's just um. You know, you're going to be burning primarily carbohydrates in this whole ride, so it's definitely a, a, a um, source of fuel that you should be either topped up with beforehand or or um, supplementing during the ride. But there you go. <laughs> seeing as the <laughs> seeing as it's so short, you know, it's only an hour long. You tend to have about 90 minutes of glycogen stored in your muscles, so you should be able to get through this exercise. You know. Hydrate for sure because it gets hot and sweaty on the ergo, but um, you know, you should be able to get through the exercise without having to refuel during it too much. We are getting some questions coming through here. Before I answer those questions or bring them through, um, so on this, what I did today then to get ready for this workout was about two to three hours prior, I had a big bowl of oatmeal, dark chocolate on it, and some raisins. A lot of carbs, a little bit of fat in there, good to go. Um, and then, because I mean, I haven't really been training in big load or anything, I didn't uh, do anything extra to reload yesterday after any workout or anything. But uh, carbohydrates prior, definitely, uh, is what I was throwing down so I get ready for Hendy Torture Ride. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. So it's gonna be good, it's gonna be good. So, um, we have a question, Nathan, what's my FTP? Uh, so usually I set around, uh, 315 to 320. We definitely brought it down a little bit to a day. I think we set it at like 295 today. All right, Rogers. All right, Rogers. We'll bring it up for now. 10% just for you. Just for you, Rogers. <laughs> for now. <laughs> that might, might be coming back down on. pretty quickly though. Yeah, I might hate that later on. Might be hating that the later emergency on. button. <laughs> for sure. For sure. And uh Mess the Happy Messy says, Hello Hendy and Nathan. How's it going there? Mess, good to see you there, buddy. So I uh we were here for a while prior to this warm up, and uh, I didn't actually jump on the bike until right before we started getting going here. And it looks like a nice warm up is built into the workout, so you can just jump right on and it go get it going right away. It looks like for this workout. Yeah, it's um, it's a pretty basic warm up. There's no nothing special um, towards it. It's just you know, like I get you in a steady state. Three minutes three minute increments basically, up, right up to just under your threshold power. So it's, uh, yeah, we don't want to, again, we don't want to overproduce lactic acid until the, we start our actual efforts. And then uh, during the efforts, you'll notice it's it's one minute above threshold, one minute below threshold, and we're going to hold that for 10 minutes. And what that actually does is for that one minute, if we start producing more lactate than what your body can clear, but it's only for a minute, and then you sit, settle back down to a, a level where, you know, it's 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 ninety percent of your threshold, so it should be kind of comfortable. But it's the, again, we're working on accumulated fatigue. So after after you've done this six or seven times, you'll be starting to notice each time you get out of the seat to do that one minute, you'll be starting to feel that lactic acid building up, building up. So by the end of the, the exercise, you'll have a fair amount of lactic acid circulating, circulating around the legs. Gotcha. So. Um, the idea, like Greg was saying there, then, hey, is to build up more than you can handle, it sounds like, over and over again. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Slowly build it up and then relax underneath it and build it up a bit more, relax underneath it. So it's just a, 
just slowly accumulating that lactic acid. I am seeing here a question coming through from Daniel Carruthers saying, are you live from Dunedin or Dunedin? Greg. Dunedin. Dunedin, Dunedin. That's my hometown. I know Daniel Carruthers. G'day, mate. How are you? No, I'm live from Boulder, Colorado. <clears throat> and what do you... Oh, yeah. So that's something to talk about. So what's going on this week, Greg? Outside of yeah. uh, making sure Nathan is getting his workouts in and uh, everybody else out there that wants to get a hold of this Coach Hendy ride, what... Uh, What's the uh, what's the plan for this week with UHC? So yes, basically directly after this, I'm jumping in the car and driving down to Colorado Springs. I uh, meet the team there, and we start the um, Colorado Classic there. It's um, four days, sort of base Colorado Springs, Denver. We've got one day up in Breckenridge. It's um, four day race, hopefully with uh, with two or three sprint days, which would suit myself and Travis McCabe and Spook Lake's a pretty exciting event. They've got um, live music in the evening and then bike racing before us, before we actually turn up the pros. So it's going to be a pretty exciting four days of uh, entertainment. And that's at Elevation, right? You were talking a little bit about getting ready for that, I think, the last couple of weeks. That's right. Yeah, so I did um, a race in Cascade and Bend, Oregon, and then I went directly up to Breckenridge which was, uh, you know, it's really high. It's nine and a half thousand feet there. And um, some of my training I was doing with my, my teammate, Dan Eaton. I mean, we topped out Loveland Pass, I think it's 11,990 feet. So it was, it was just madness. I remember doing, trying to do 290 watts and I was doing 180 heart rates. Oh my it goodness. Just, it was unbearable. Yeah, I was quite happy to, turn around and go back down the other side. So a couple of questions. I mean, is that for your physiological adaptation, but also for just getting used to what that's going to feel like and understanding what's going to happen? More so that than physiological adaption because I, like, I was only there, I only did five rides there, but I just wanted, there's a course there. I wanted to have a look at the, the race course. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to know exactly what it's going to feel like when I go up that high, because I've never ridden my bike that high in my life before. And then, um, yeah, I mean, I live I live at elevation, I live at 1600 meters. So, you know, okay, it's, but you know, when when you're talking uh, 3,800 meters, it's a big, it's a big difference. So um, I just wanted to feel what it was like and do another five good days training off the back of the uh, tour I did in Bend. So, so that I'm in good condition for this race for, United Healthcare. So do you uh, then for the uh, the race then when you see that on the schedule is it kind of like you know this is coming this is going to be like everybody on the team knows this is coming and it's kind of one of those oh boy this one's going to hurt like everyone's thinking that everyone's kind of in that mindset like Oh man, they and put this on the schedule. Here we go. And you know, it's a it's a big race of the year too. There's uh, quite a few of the World Tour teams coming over from Europe to race it. So everyone's on display. Everyone wants to be in good condition. But um, yeah, I was just thinking about it the other day. I was like, imagine if you had no uh, you know, no no experience of elevation, no experience of altitude racing. You've just come straight from sea level, <laughs> straight to Breckenridge. <laughs> well, I can't. I just think it'd be some, it'd just be a catastrophe for some people. Have you ever done this race before? You've never done this before, I've it ne- sounds like. I've never done it, no, because uh, I was always raced with uh, Lotto Soldal, which is a Belgian team, and they, we never came out to America to do the American races. So I missed out. And then, uh, but <laughs> just missed imagine. out. You missed out. <laughs> yeah, missed out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, It'll be a nice race. Though. I've heard the crowds are just huge, you know, like Tour de France crowds. So it's um, it always makes wow. racing so much more fun. Yeah, they, oh. they, they, cycling's huge in Colorado. It exactly seems it's really yeah. growing. They love it here. They um, I mean every every day you go out training here, it's, you know, you see thirty or forty people on the bike. So it's definitely a um, a cycling mad 
meet the Randy. All right, Rogers, that's enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in the last three minutes of your warm up now? Yeah, I may have to adjust. I think my, uh, the um, cable on the front railer loosened up. Let's just kick it. So, we can't get in the big ring. We need a big ring, baby. Let's go. The big chain ring. Everybody yeah. Everybody needs the big chain ring, right? So Carly Taylor says, I've always typically done a bit longer than one minute under FTP. After doing a surge over FTP, I'm gonna bring the whole thing in here. So, uh, what is one minute above, one minute under FTP, the best combo? Is what her question is. This is more of a, um... Oh, Carly. <laughs> I know Carly. She's one of the best climbers in the world, actually. She's, she's um, one of the best female climbers out there. Uh, so this is more about mixing up the, um, the ability in and out of the saddle. You'll notice, like I said with Dan Martin, he's always in and out of the saddle. Alberto Contador, always in and out of the saddle. It's a... It's a technique that you find heavier riders really struggle to, to do. So it's more it's more about changing up the um, you know the variation of the climb. It's not more about an FTP surge. The variation on and off, over and over again, is the key. It sounds like to this, rather than. Um, spending longer times over or under is what exactly. it sounds like you're getting at there. Exactly that. Right, let's see if we can get the big ring here. I'm going to one foot pedal at 150 watts. We might just have to jump off. I'm going to fail this one. Better than last week where That's we all. failed all of them. <laughs> We've got two minutes, mate. We've got two minutes. We gotta get that big ring. Yeah. There it is. It was just that little bit where the yeah. uh, where the front derailleur cable just did this just enough of a loosening that it couldn't pull the uh, derailleur over to the big ring. All right, so. Intervals on Zwift. What's your setup look like? Because right now I've got an air conditioner. I've got an industrial sized fan <laughs> at my feet here. Blowing the air conditioned <laughs> air up at me. So, I mean, it's a, it, heating up is a huge issue on indoor training, but the control of the environment, I think, Greg, is one of the things, like you were talking about training in an environment that lowers your oxygen. You actually see people with like hypoxico devices or other devices trying to simulate that at, at sea level. And heat, cooling, you know, oxygen. I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do with your environment in order to Produce a better stress response, and that seems what it's all about. So, what um, what's your setup look like to keep that? I mean, is, I mean, isn't that right? I mean, we want to keep as cool as possible during high and hard efforts. Look, the best, the beauty about it, ergo training is you can, like you said, control the environment. So it's you can replicate it day in and day out. So if you do this exercise today, and then you come back and tackle it again in four or five days, you can absolutely have spot on same environment in which you get it and then you'll see improvements or or not so it's uh whereas if you went out on the road and did this and then one day you might have a headwind up the hill the next day it might be hot the next time it might be raining so you've got so many environmental variations you've got road variations that's the beauty about an ergo is you can get on 100 percent perfect every time doing the exact wattage same environment and you can see performance benefits straight away. 
So replicating, that was a lot of issues for me outdoors as well, was such a big difference of percentages between what I was doing in wattages a lot of times and confusion. Like, why am I not getting the same numbers or this day it's way better or whatever it might be? Because the environment affects it so much. But if you can replicate the same stresses, you can do, uh, you can really see uh, and measure against past efforts and see the ability changes. All right, we're in it now. We're in it now. We so this next minute's out of the seat. Just over the FTP. The trick is trying to get that body when you sit down just to try and relax, try and recover at the power while you're seated. Difficult, difficult thing to do, but you still notice that the top guys they can they can do these surges out of the seat for about a minute, and when they sit back down, they're totally in control of the, the effort again. And it's a trained, it's a trained situation, whereas you do this effort a couple of times, and it's actually a lot easier. Your body just adapts to it instantly. So this is your first one out of the seat. First one at 300. And all that fluctu fluctuation, that's something I should be worried yeah. about. That's where we talked about erg mode black. black. Just keep it black. <laughs> Alright, oh, no, one minute now. Just back down under your threshold. And to concentrate on good form, full pedal stroke, full pedal technique. And count down the seconds. Or look for that banner. That's a great visual up ahead there. Can you see it in the distance there? Yeah, yeah. So I know when it's 30 coming. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. So the first couple should be fine. You'll be like, okay, yeah, I can see this. And by the time we get through 10 minutes, we'll just be starting to accumulate that fatigue. No red, no red. What are you doing, Nathan? Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. Okay, here we go. Back out of the seat. Now the other thing about, uh, it's really interesting, about getting out of the seat and in and out of the seat is, say for example, Dan Martin, is where we got the exercise off. It's called the Dan Martin Mixer because these young, these lightweight guys have no problem in and out of the sh seat, shifting between, you know, predominantly a quad exercise when they're out of the seat to a glute exercise and hamstring when they're seated. The reason they can get in and out of the seat so often is they don't weigh that much. You know, he's 59 kilos versus, you know, say someone like Andre Greipel who's 84 kilos. So to actually get out of the seat all the time when you're in the 80 kilos versus someone who's under 60, it doesn't cost you any energy. So you can easily change how you feel, what muscles you're engaging. You can easily change it about without doing too much, causing too much physiological stress to the body. Uh -oh. Such an, such an advantage. I think I need to move my Extender. There we go, we're good. So up and out of the saddle. Definitely uh a workout just doing that then, hey? Never thought yeah, of that actually. So uh, yeah, another it's always a physiological cost that we uh we always talk about. That's why getting in and out of the saddle. A new standing raised the heart rate and made you work harder. Never thought about like the actual effort of raising body weight though. It's interesting. Yeah. So that can be, uh, there is one bonus, like when you're fresh, you can actually use body weight to turn the pedals over. But you do it repeatedly, 
for 10 minutes at a time, you, as you'll find out, you'll start to labour, you'll start to be comfortable sitting in the seat. And then every time it says, right, I get out of the seat, you're like, oh, okay, out to get. It's really a, um, it's a learned technique. I find when I want to rest a little, I'll shift up and try and find the body weight into the gear, but then I pay for Absolutely. it in a little bit. Absolutely. <laughs> I think I'm getting a couple dropouts here. It's a glitch in the matrix, mate. It's a glitch in the yep. matrix. There it is. Sit back down now, mate, 280. There we go. There you go. Get back on top of the gear. 90 RPM. When I'm doing these efforts, I always think, righto, how many times do I have to get out of the seat? And I sort of count back down. Okay, I've got two more times out of the seat. Righto, two more efforts. Any kind of mental trick, any kind of mental game that you can use to get yourself through these efforts. In the distance, you can see the banner. So, like, righto, I'm out of the seat when that banner comes. Bang on the 300 watts. Here we go. See those little surges, 360, 370. I'm gonna pay for that. Cost you in a, yeah, that'll <laughs> cost you in a couple of minutes, mate. It's gonna cost you. <laughs> Just that tiny little extra, little bit of amount of lactic acid circulating around the legs. You'll be like, ah, I remember that time. <laughs> That's the thing, if I got you to just ride 290 watts for 10 minutes, you know, you'd do 90% of it seated. Because it, it's a controllable effort, you'd be happy to do it. But the fact that we're actually switching it up, forcing you in and out of the seat, changes the, changes the demand on the muscle groups, makes it a much harder effort. Something that's relatively simple, it becomes a very, it's a, mental, it's a mental effort plus a physiological effort. So, it's tapping into both areas here. One more minute out of the seat, mate, and we're done. <clears throat> yeah, I'll definitely have to shift over. The ergo's not picking up the power there, is it? Yeah, I think I might have to just move something. It's fine. Heart rate's fine though. All right, the second. Eight seconds, here we go. Right in that yellow banner, we're getting back out of the seat, mate. Straight on to 300 watts. It just wants me to fail. What's that extra motivation? It's an exercise, mate. As Don't we worry, we can see you doing the work. It's, as we drop the... FTP, it's torturing me for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's good, though. Good power. Twenty seconds to go, mate. That's your first set done. There's the banner, the white banner, mate, all the way to the line. That's great. Good job. Right, Oak, take five. <laughs> yeah, so you can see, like, switching in and out of the seat, it's difficult. 
It's yeah. really difficult to do it. Starts out, you think, okay, this isn't too bad. And I'll tell you, by the end of it, you're like, wow, <laughs> wow. I'd love to just stay seated. By the end, I'm pushing 180s there. Yeah. We started under threshold. Funny. Yeah, it just, <sighs> just t keeps tripping, it's um, ticking over, doesn't it? Like, it's like a cardiac drift. You just notice your heart rate's just slowly going up and up and up. Just at the time when you think I've had enough, get your five minutes rest, start again. All right, we're gonna move the bike a little bit. Right on, mate. So it's another good simulation for, uh, you know, when, if you're riding in the peloton up a hill and somebody attacks you, you know, you know the power, extra power is coming. And you're typically going to get out of your, typically going to get out of your saddle. And this is what, this is what this trains you for. It trains your body, so you just know. Okay, I know I can do a minute out of the seat, no problem. And you have to remember that most attacks won't last longer than a minute. They're usually 30 seconds all out, 30 seconds hard, and then they settle back into that, settle back into that threshold zone. So it's just to teach your body, and this is the beginning stage too. You know, there's other, there's other specific climbing workouts we do that are absolutely like spot on how a climb goes. But this is, again, an introduction so that your body knows, okay, this is what it's going to feel like if someone attacks and I have to try and cover. Or the other thing is, this is what it's going to feel like when you go around those hairpin corners. And there's that little surge in the bunch. You can just, you've got to accelerate more than you want to, but your body's used to it. Going over threshold, under threshold. Over threshold, under threshold. It's all about adaption. So we have a couple of comments coming in here. Taper week for CS Tricks, driving me crazy. I want to ride, he says. Tower <laughs> says I'm on taper life. Uh, Saturday, CS Tricks has a state TT race. Now that's the opposite. Well, not the opposite. This is somewhat similar. But how does that, because uh, you're talking about attacking in groups and things. And maybe relating a little bit to what Trix is saying there, how, uh, how does this workout relate though then to somebody who wants more of a try or a TT effort? The reality is, is you have fluctuation, I would think, still, even within those efforts. It, in reality, but it's a controlled fluctuation. That's the difference, whereas in, in a climb, it, unless you're set in pace, unless you're Team Sky on the front doing ridiculous amounts of watts, you don't have control of the pace. In a time trial, it's all you. You're within a bracket, you know, an upper and a lower. So, actually funny you should mention that because next week we're doing a functional threshold power training session. And that's just all about lifting that bottom line, basically that pushing that level that where you can clear lactate just as quick as what you're producing it. And if you can move that number up, that maybe 300 now, in a week's time, it may be 310. But you know, if you, if you follow the structured time trial program that you can get at my website, you'll get a massive increase in your, your bottom line, your baseline functional threshold power. Because all we concentrate on is, is moving that, that functional threshold power to a level where, you know, maybe 30 or 40 watts higher than what you currently have. And that's just a totally, totally different energy system that we're working again. But it's um, you know, it's it's almost the key to cycling is that functional threshold power because it's the area where you're comfortable and you know you're not accumulating fatigue and that you could do for you know effectively a very very long time. And if you can lift that the higher that number is, effectively the easier each time trial feels. Sorry, I will rephrase that. The faster you'll go in each time trial, and the each uh, each road race feels a little bit easier. 
we can do that next week. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> no, it'll be good. It's type two fun. And uh, that's actually a huge amount of my training was focused on getting functional threshold up as much as possible because it was a weakness for me. As a BMXer yes. background, a mountain right, bike a background, a lot of a lot kicking, of accelerations. Power. Yeah. So then I had that great, but the, uh, the struggle was in being very consistent with power all the way through. So. Sure. I had to do the same thing. I had to work on coming from a sprint background. Really work on that threshold. It could be some of the most boring parts of cycling, but it's the most responsive. You know, two or three key sessions and you notice a difference. It's incredible. All right, out of the saddle. Here we go. Here we go. Nice. You're nicely peddling to the beat of that music, mate. It's good to see. Great music selection. Oh no, the music stops. Don't stop, mate. Don't stop. You can see the banner. So again, this will feel, this is your first time out of the saddle. It's going to feel, you know, about halfway through the first set, even three quarters of the way through the first set. It's that accumulation of lactic acid, accumulation of fatigue. You've just got to control it. And then sit back down now and try and hide that 180 watts, 280 watts, and try and add some sort of recovery into it. 180, sounds good, let's go. 280. All right, here we go, yeah, boys. 180, sorry, mate. We're all good. Just playing. No fail, no fail. Here we oh, go. You're doing good this Stars time, mate. all the way. <laughs> I had to make some very <laughs> quick adjustments to mine because <laughs> I just pushed play and I started doing the workout. <laughs> but I'm trying to talk and do the workout, it's like, oh, that's, that's too many, that's too much power, I can't talk. So I've just been quickly going, tap, 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 down, down. Bring it down that 10%. Oh, I need 20% today. Oh. That's good, right? Perfect taper for uh, Tour of Colorado coming up. Righto, back out of the seat. Rang right on that 300 watts, good to see. You. 300 watts, good stuff. 20 seconds to go now. So you'll be getting high levels of lactic now because you'll also have the accumulation from the last 10 minutes that you did. So they progressively get harder and harder to whereas you think by the time you're doing a last set, it's not possible to be under threshold at all, but it actually is. Your body will still not be producing massive amounts of lactic acid. It's just the accumulated fatigue that we go on about. Good job, mate. Thanks. Here we go. Ooh ah. Hey, you're doing good, mate. You've got. You've only got three more times out of the seat, and you finish this one too. Good mental gymnastics. Love it. It's. I mean, cycling is so much that you can just break the effort down. I often do it with the long intervals. You know, it's like a 15-minute sub threshold effort. Try to break it down into three by five minutes. You know, maybe get in and out of your seat just to change those muscle groups. So it's, uh, yeah, definitely a mental, very large mental aspect to, to cycling. 
Righto. Three hundred watts again. Nice. See so your heart rate. Carter gone. says hi. How's it going, Great King Carter? Over at the Mixer Channel. Good to see you. Nice. Good day, mate. Again, if you want right, to nice interact with Greg, you can ask questions through Twitter or our Facebook or our live streaming platforms. On Twitter, it's at, at Z me. Community Live. At Z Community Live, at Coach Hindi. Ask away. Any questions you want. I ask Nathan how much he's hurting right now. <laughs> I might not answer. Good ones. That'll be a good answer. 176, 176 heart rate, 177, righto. Take a minute recovery, just under that threshold. It's gonna take 30 seconds, 40 seconds before it starts to feel okay. But again, you just have to know, okay, it's still gonna hurt for 30 seconds, then I'll just start to feel okay. Unfortunately, we can see that banner down the end of this road, mate. We've had long discussions have, about that banner. Tricks, I haven't taken anything in a while as I uh, am not training hard. So no, says Tricks talking about my sounding. I lay off all medications if I'm not training hard. I don't want it in my body. Sure. There it goes. Righto, mate. Out of the seat. Too much. Too much. Second last one. That's good. Good work, mate. Thirty seconds of this one left. She's all over Red Rover because that last one's just psychological. There goes the banner. Everything to the banner. So good for these workouts, you know. Just one hour, so beneficial to your performance. So beneficial to your fitness. I mean. So many people are like, oh, I can't get out. I love to go out on the road. When you don't have the time and you really want to, you know, utilize the small amount of time you've got, these structured workouts, they're just perfect. It's like you get such a workout, you get so fit from just doing, you know, you start from point A and you want to get to point B and there's a direct path there. Okay, it's got some lumps along the way, but you can follow a program and just commit one hour a day to it, you'll get huge gains on the indoor trainer with a program like Swift. All right. Right, oh, see that banner? It's your last one, mate. Good job. Perfect. I'm hitting up Box Hill at the moment. I'm going a little bit, uh, a little bit easier up here than what I did 2012 Olympics. That's for sure. <laughs> I remember going up here, and the peloton was going that fast we actually had to put our brakes on around the corner. And I was like, oh man, this is crazy. I've, I've never had to break uphill before. Of course, I've seen, I've seen some guys do it, but the fact that you know, I was actually in a peloton going fast enough uphill that we had to use our brakes on an uphill corner, that's just, it's just tripping me out. Righto, good job, mate, you're right there. There's the banner, that is perfection, mate. Well done. 
Look at that. Ten gold stars. Good job. Five minutes now. I'll hit the third one. Oh. Thank you. You definitely uh, noticed my heart rate sticking longer right now. Not dropping as quickly. Untrained. You'll plateau now. Absolutely, um, you'll plateau you. So, um, as people do this workout, or your workouts, what kind of heart rate responses are they looking for? Because I'm thinking about that right now. It's in my head, watching my heart rate response like, okay, I just want that to come down, bring it back. I know that the next two sets are coming. I want to recover. Yep. So what's the expectation around the five, five minutes here? Well, you wanna, you're not going to ever get back to baseline now because your body's doing so much to try and recover now. You've got excess lactic acid circulating through the blood. One form to get that off is CO2 emissions. So blowing off carbon dioxide when you breathe is actually a way to help recovery. So you'll notice you'll be ventilating a lot faster. Yeah, and then also, that. yeah, and that's just purely a recovery process. It's like when you do a max sprint at the end of a race and you see them on the TV, they can still be puffing five minutes after the race. It's not actually because they're still physically tired. It's still because they have massive amounts of lactic acid circulating in their muscles. And that's one of the body's defense mechanisms is to blow off those excess hydrogen ions through ventilation. So they do in their interviews, you know, and it's five minutes since they stopped sprinting. It's just because they've gone so deep that they have so much lactic acid in the legs and their body's wanting to clear it. So you can look, you'll get 10. Look at you, you've gone right down. So that shows me that you've got a very good general fitness, general base fitness. You want to come down quicker, quicker. Come on, <laughs> come down quicker. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, I man. want less. <laughs> But you'll oh, also boy. notice when you start this next set, your heart rate will go, boom, it'll be within right back. that threshold, yeah. correct, directly in there. Because you've got, again, that excess of lactic acid, and your body's like, I've got to get rid of this somehow. So, yeah, you'll, you'll ventilate your heart rate, will pump, pumps more and more blood. I'm going to fail again. i got to move the bike a little. Sweat rag. We didn't grab one. It's right there. It's under the chair next to me. More failing, Greg. I'm sorry. Oh, man. Ah, mate. Doing good. Come on now. Exercise. <laughs> Remember, it's the exercise. We're getting through right. the efforts. We're hitting the numbers where we need to efforts, hit the numbers. Right? It's all about the efforts, right? Absolutely. It's I mean, there's days out. where... There's days where you get on the bike, you're maybe 20 or 30 watts below what you normally do. It's fine. It happens to everyone. Sometimes there's no explanation. As long as you know, okay, turn the power down, get through the effort, you know, and end up delivering on the day. But as long as you know in the back of your mind, right, it's an exercise, I've got to finish this exercise. The numbers are just to guide me. The numbers are just to tell me when I'm on, when I'm off. It can be within, you know, that 10% that we talk about. But you're still doing the exercise at hand. And that's why, I mean, that's why we have this, uh, this little up and down by 20%. I mean, really, you can fluctuate hugely depending on how yes. you're doing on the day, right? I mean, in the lower left-hand corner here, you guys, you can see where my cursor is. I can bring this up by 10% or bring it down to 10% uh, below, you know? So definitely have the ability to change up the workout on the day so it's not rigid. Depending Absolutely. on how your body's responding. Right. That's what it's all about. We do have a comment here from Leia Freestead. She's saying, uh, how to replicate the same effort and stimuli outdoors. So she's saying, I know she's a part of the Zwift Academy, runs Zwift Academy rides. And uh, I know she rides a lot as well. Maybe during this X effort, what do you think about the replication 
and the stimuli outdoors versus indoors and uh, how much advantage is there to indoor riding as I go into this next one here oh boy here we go here we go no, we're getting so a lot of questions we're getting a lot of questions like why not just go outside some in real life questions and I'm like well <laughs> This definitely feels in real life to me right now. I'm in real life, boys and girls. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really hurting in real life, I promise. <laughs> no, the, the key, like we talked about, the key is it's so, you can replicate it just to near perfection, you know, whereas, and also if you're, if you're stuck for time. So let's take, for example, the climb that you want to do the effort on, it might be 45 minute ride to that climb and you've only got an hour and a half before you've got to be back at work. It's like, wow, you're not going to get your efforts in. And then, say for example, yeah, like it's a headwind up the climb today. So you don't normally get as far up the climb as what you normally would. The power's a lot higher than what, to actually just keep moving, the power's way high. And then vice versa, one day it's a tailwind. The climb's finished before you finished your effort. There's so many variables outside. And don't get me wrong, there's time and place for all that. But when you train on the ergo, when you train inside, you're more developing a system, an energy system, that will cope with what you're dealt with in real life. So for example, the accelerations over threshold, this exercise helps you cope with those in real life. And for example, we're doing one minute out of the seat over threshold. In reality, a lot of the attacks, 20 or 30 seconds, but you've trained your body for a minute. So then all of a sudden, the attack stops 20 or 30 seconds in, and you're like, oh wow, okay, I still feel good after that. So it's indoors, it's so, it's so, even if it's such a word, replicatable. <laughs> you can do it time and time again without the fear of, you know, external elements. It's like, almost like being in a lab. You do your lab test, your lactate tolerance test, your sprint test. It's super reliable, and you can just do it to the, to the cows come home, mate. We have a question, how do you get the glowing wheels? How do we get the glowing yeah. wheels? You know how to You've get got to go uphill for 50,000 meters. You've got to climb out of the, the Earth's atmosphere. So you accumulate with hours and hours of riding on Swift. Every altitude meter gained is, is logged into your lifetime altitude meters. And once you clock 50,000, you get to get the, uh, the Tron bike. And apparently it makes the Dan Martin mixes from Coach Hendy, apparently it makes them really easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, so easy. Yeah, just floating through it. Peter, what's my FTP right now? I don't know. I haven't really been trying Right now lately, he wishes it. But... I wish it was low, it was 50 watts higher. <laughs> but it's so, FTP is so, uh, it's so personal, it's so relatable to the individual. I mean, it's so weight related. The big guys, the big sprinters, they have functional threshold powers of 440, 460 watts, but convert that back to watts per kilogram, you know, it's it's like every other normal sprinter. Whereas you look at 460 watts and you just go, what? I can't believe I could do that for five minutes maybe. It's, it's like 50 watts higher than frooms. But you could also remember you might be 25, 25 kilos heavier than Froom. So it's so, it's actually a really good number because it's your number and one of the great ways of increasing it is not only by pushing more power on the pedals, because you have to divide that number by how many kilograms you are, 
So you just, it makes you think, makes you think twice about that second helping of dinner. Makes you think twice about that ice cream under, after dinner. <laughs> if you're worried about your FTP so much. My Nutella and strawberries from last night. Oh boy. Oh yeah, Here we go. love it. What's your favorite indoor trainer from Peter? So I've got a, uh, an amazing machine called a red box and it's a uh, low inertia training machine basically it teaches you to ride with a full pedal stroke it's not uh doesn't have the high inertia which gives you that free wheel effect on the road to make it actually turn you have to engage your glutes your hamstrings and your quads so you actually are forced to do a full pedal stroke it's called a rev box Go and look them up on the web. They're a New Zealand made company and they're incredible. Perfect for, perfect for cycling technique. And that's another thing that I touch on with my programs over at coachhendy.com. A lot of emphasis on technique. Some days we actually just do a technique day. Absolutely focus on not moving on your bike, full pedal stroke. There's one session I do there where you're not even allowed to touch the handlebars. You just rest your hands on the handlebars and it makes you absolutely 100% around circular motion. So it's, you know, sure it's great to be able to smash out big power, but if you're not efficient in your pedal stroke, the time in which you can put that big power out gets shortened. So if we can pedal efficient, your body becomes efficient, you spare glycogen where you need spare glycogen, and you can ride for longer. Here we go, mate. One minute, 300 watts, nice. See Nathan that's using all his body weight to get those pedals over. And that's the thing with out of the seat climbing. You can actually make it benefit you by stomping a little bit on the pedal and turn that leg over. And as you can see, it's a, a much more quad dominant exercise when you're out of the seat. Your calves are a, a stabilizing platform to push on and it's quads and glute. When you sit back down, you notice you've got to really engage the hamstrings, glutes, so it gives, gives everything a little bit of a, I wouldn't say a rest at the stage of the game, but it just switches things up. Good job, uh, mate. Rest time after a session, like this Peter's asking. What's that, sorry? Rest time. Rest time. After a yeah, session, it's, like it's this. Totally, totally dependent on on your ability, but this is uh, this is four by ten minutes. They don't get much bigger than this. There's, I think maybe in preparation for the tour, we would do six, six, seven, ten minute efforts like this. So this is a pretty heavy session, um, you know. And on my programs, it's like level one, level two, level three. So you would be thinking maybe okay, the first time we do this effort, we would do two maybe three of them so that your body's adapted to them and used to it so then the next week that you try them okay you can do the same power but you can do one more effort well the other thing we like to try is we can do more power but the same amount of effort so say we do three efforts with 300 and then next week we can do three efforts with 320 so there's, there's plenty of variation in these things As for recovery, it all depends on how you've structured your work week out. Um, sorry, your week workout. Um, if it comes at the end of a two or three day block, then normally this will be a nice, easy recovery day afterwards. Or the one thing with strength intervals, we can do strength intervals in a fatigued state. 
So this might be day one. Day two might be a strength related exercise. And then day three might be your recovery day. Perfect. Ooh, nice. How you going, mate? Wow. Wow. That is awesome. There we go. Righto. Get that recovery in there, brother. That's impressive. That's really impressive. So effectively, we're sitting, you know, 290 average, close to 300 for already 30 minutes. That's a, it's an impressive workout, mate. This is a great question. Where can we get these plans? And will they work for MTB stage races as well? Oh, great question, absolutely. The thing is, uh, well firstly, go to my website, www.coachhindi.com, and you have a selection there of nine different training programs. There's sprint related, there's time trial related, and there's climb, climbing related uh, training programs. They're all structured for you. So you start from day one. The only thing you need to change is perhaps the extra rest day every now and then, depending on your time you can get on the bike. Um, there are a lot of so here you go. explosives. This is, uh, this is where it's at. Here Looks we go. Like, uh, the programs, sprint training, TT, climb training, etc. So coachhendy.com is where you can find them. And you actually load them directly into Zwift. You can load them directly into Swift. They're That's how we did it today. We, got, we just CWA downloaded file. it and put it right in. Sorry, sorry, Greg. Go ahead. No, like I was saying, I created all the workouts in Training Peaks Workout Creator and then uh, converted them to a ZWO file and attached them all to the PDF download that you can download from my website. And as I was saying, for mountain biking, a lot of explosive work, a lot of high power stuff, and we touch on a lot of that in the uh, sprint programs. Because when you think about a sprint, it's actually not necessarily just the 15 seconds to the finish line, it's the two or three minutes that lead up to that sprint to the finish line, that massive amount of lactate that you've got about to handle, and then be able to still produce power. And then also, for a sprinter, it's no use being able to do 1,700 watts and not be at the finish of a bike race. So there's always that touch up on on your FTP. There's always that that day in the training session, that day of the week, where we have to go, right, come on, let's revisit the FTP because we have to get over the climbs. We have to make sure we get to the finish of that bike race, not get dropped on the climb so that we can then Produce that power in the sprint. <clears throat> oh boy. All right, I'm starting to feel better actually. Hey. It's funny. You know, if you yeah, don't right. do a whole lot after a while, like it takes a little while to warm back up into uh, harder effort. Does that make sense? Like, it's I absolutely feel like what we were talking about last week. Yeah, go ahead. So last week we were talking about that neuromuscular adaption and that's what's happening today too. You're like, your body knows how to do them. It's just been a while. So you revisit the effort. You go back and see it and like, man, it hurts for a couple, but then you start, okay, your body works it out. Your body becomes really efficient, finds the easiest way. And that's human nature when training it. Your body tries to find the easiest way in which to overcome this stress. So, you know, it starts to learn after having done two or three of these. Okay, now I worked out how to do it. Now I know where to save energy. And that's that neuromuscular pathway being revisited. This is a race review. <laughs> but if you want to oh, feel yeah, like nice. you're like closer to the next part of the interval. <laughs> Go to first person view. <laughs> Get a little bit closer. Oh my gosh. Going uphill. 
on that last one, it felt like it was taking forever to get to it. Like, and then yeah. if you speed up, it goes farther away. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, totally, the banner. <sighs> All right, here we go, seated. Whew. Back on the 280. Last one. Good job. Righto. Let's just watch that heart rate. See how that goes, see how that responds now with all that lactate circulating around the system. Okay, so this is quite comfy. 280. It's the out of the seat. It's where you instantly get, you employ those large muscles. The quads just do the, so much of the work. And they just load up left gas. 15 seconds. You never see the banner on the downhill. Going too there he fast. is. There it is. All right. Right. Good job, mate. Heart rate's right back in the honey hole, mate. That's what we call the honey hole. Oh, <laughs> it's great to see you smiling while you suffer. It's I like, have that fake smile. I got that Sam so Schultz smile. Chris Horner, Chris Horner also. Yes, would be smiling the whole time. You'd be like, what? That's actually your sucker face. It's deceptive, mate. I like it. Ooh. Could maybe we could maybe model that face. <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay, there's the banner. Oh, no. Hang on to it, mate. You know, this is the last one. Now it's about hanging on to the effort. Really set that mind in. Doing great. What a great Casey Shum coming through and be here. Is that? I'm here now. Excited to try this workout. I think that means I have a problem. <laughs> I'm excited to try this with it means. <laughs> Good on you, Casey. That's what I like to see. Yeah, excellent. So, there's a video coming out on demand that will show you exactly how to put the ZWO files into your Zwift workouts. And then you go and click on your Zwift workouts, boom, up it pops like magic. All your intervals are there for you. It's all done on a percentage of your FTP. So, the power that you wanna do it's your power, it's not some power that someone's just randomly predicted. So, enjoy. This is the Dan Martin Mixer. It's a video on demand from last week. We had the Andre Greipel special. I'll tell you, you guys don't want to be around when Hurricane Henderson comes out. Coach oh, Henderson special. Ooh. Hurricane Henderson. <laughs> Here we go. Hurricane Henderson. Oh, the torture <laughs> is on the way. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just talking about my, my favorite training rides, the one down to the coffee shop, mate. You should know me. All right, we're starting to hurt now. Here we go. Good man. Last one. Hey, look at that, you got a KOM. KOM yeah. juicy. Got the KOM. Feeding it. What a legend. You're killing it. That's Fox Hill. Not too many competitors. Oh. That's good though. So only three more efforts to go. <sighs> Done. <laughs> Here we go, we're about to start the next one.
Those banners are great when their effort's about to finish. They're horrible when they're about to start. Good job, mate. Just hang on to it. Perfect. That's good. Right in the honey hole, mate. Gonna get stung. Here we go. 180. Good job. <laughs> 25 seconds of this to go. You can see the banner. So far away. Right. Come on now. You've got to do a U-turn. You're doing a U-turn, mate. Don't panic. It's a U-turn right here. Right around this corner. Imagine if someone accelerated now, you'd be perfect for it. And boom. Good job. Heart rate's just sitting one, 180. It's commitment, mate. I love to see commitment. Just a nice more. feeling now, you know. More. Just gotta hang on to it, buddy. Just hang on to it. You got two more and you're done. Good session. Like you said, after two of those, you started to learn the pattern, you know, your body started to learn one minute up, one minute down, one minute up. And it's true, your body just gets used to it. So the next time you try these, or the next time they're replicated in a training program, you can adapt to it so much faster. All right. There we, we go. go. And out of the chair we go. Bang on that 300. Right on the sweet spot there. You can tell it's a perfect wattage for you because just in that one minute, your heart rate's dropping about eight beats. Now you get back up to close to not much more. But the fact that it's still dropping means you've got that, that residual base that I was talking about. Just enough. The torture yeah, just Nathan. enough. Oh. You're just enough to get through, mate. Great job. 20 seconds left. We're on the home stretch. Hang on to it. Good job. That's five seconds. Righto. Try and recover as much as you can. That's it. Perfect. Big deep breaths. Turn the legs. Perfect. You've got this, mate. One to go. It's game over. So you see how it mixes up your rhythm. You're in and out of the seat. By the end of these efforts here now, you're like, oh, do I have to get out of the seat? It just trains oh, you. Yeah. Every time someone accelerates in the bunch, you get out of the seat, chase it, go with it, absorb it. So it's definitely just put something different into just sitting 10 minutes at 390 watts. Last one. Righto. Last one, brother. It's all over. Good job. Sprinting down the mile, are we? How fitting. Perfect. 300 watts. Session nearly done. A lot of lactate. A lot of accumulated lactate, especially since three and since four. It's good to see you get such a great adaption from this this workload. Great, there's the there's the banner, mate. All the way. Yep. 
Legs are burning. Legs are burning. Good job. Excellent. That is a session and a half. Oh yeah. Good job. So that's the Dan Martin mixer. Ooh, ah. Yeah, that's a session. And uh, you know, when I just trained with Dan a bit back in the day, he'd be always the type of guy that would just get out on his bike and he wouldn't go by set numbers, he wouldn't go by too much structured training and he would just attack in races when he felt good. And you can see that when the way he rides, one minute he's in the seat, he looks like suffering in the seat and then just gets out of the seat and takes off. It it's like, yeah, it's just, he's so used to training that stimulus, changing, changing of power. It's impressive. One of the most naturally gifted climbers on the bike, I think. And he's very dangerous as a climber to come to the finish with because he's so light, 59 kilos, but Ooh, that's he can still so pop. Light. Yeah, oh but he can still pop out 1200 watts in a sprint. So you gotta be really careful when you come to the line with Dan Martin. You think, oh, okay, small little climber. You can put the power down there. Uh, Casey is wondering if I was on ERG. We're just measuring that for manually. I'm going off of, I like to use a, I like to use a strain gauge, Casey, personally. I've used ERG and I like it for certain kinds of efforts. And I like my strain gauge for others. Maybe one of these days we'll get on the kicker here or jump on the power beam or hammer and uh, yeah. try out some ERG, maybe just to highlight that in the game. You guys can watch me go into the spiral of death if I can't hold the wattage. <laughs> Good job. That was a great exercise. That was, that was, uh, that was amazing. Um, really, really, really pushed me. What I liked about the workout the most was that I could tell I was getting huge stress response during the times I was up, but there was enough reprieve yeah. Just, just enough. under, just enough that I could go mm -hmm. there again and I could go for that, that carrot over and over again, but then yeah. pull back and be like, okay, regroup mentally, think about the effort that's coming and then Absolutely. go for it again. It's kind of a really enjoyable almost. I mean, it's kind of weird to say it, but being able to go into that 180 over and over again and see that number was uh, really cool as well. You know, that's um, yeah. It's, it's a very, like I said, a very specific workout, and it gives you just enough rest to, to trick your body and think, "Right, oh, I can do this again." You know, and then you finish that effort out of the seat. You go, oh, "I can't do any more," and then it's just, just enough recovery. Oh yeah, I can do it again. So it's it's a really, it's that's why you know it's it's just science really when you think about it. It's like it's your functional threshold power for a reason. You know, it's your number, so your body doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to guess. It is actually where you can recover at about that percentage. Oh, it's a great workout, mate. Well done. You nailed that one. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was really good. I do see also uh, other questions coming through here. What game is this? Is this a game? <laughs> so, yeah, this is, is a game. And it's also a trading platform at the same time. That's a good question. So there's a, there's been an argument for a while. Is it a game? Is it a trading platform? To you, Greg, what is it? Uh, like, how do you um, interact with the with Zwift? For me, it's a hundred percent training training platform. Um, a lot of people are now starting to realise that too. You know, there's, it was always just a bunch ride here and do a sprint bonus here and see if you can upgrade your wheels. But now people are coming onto this workout creator. They're putting in their structured workouts, and you know the graphics are just amazing to to ride to. Instead of just following a blue line on the screen, you've got you know a whole city to ride around. You've got you've got banners on the road to race towards. It's um, by far the you know it's just so great for your training, for your structured workout, for your limited time that you have. And uh, yeah, like we said before, if you really want to get a really good structured program on sprinting, climbing, or or time trialing, I've I've spent you know four or five months designing these these programs at www.coachhindi.com. There I am, and you will actually 
you'll love these programs. They're designed for you. You, you put in your FTP and you will actually, uh, you know, the numbers are then done for you. They're downloaded into a Swift file that you can, that you can upload to this game. And um, yeah, just follow the wattage. And that's exactly what we did today. Today we did the Dan Martin Mixer. It's actually available for download to test out if you'd like to do the workout we just did. It's over at Drift Community Live's Facebook. You'll see a picture on our front page actually of uh, Mr. Greg standing there looking at you, telling you to do the workout. <laughs> and uh, you can download it right from the Google link that we have there. Uh, we will be posting some VODs about how to put it in, but really all you do is you download it to your computer, you open up your documents, and inside your documents there's a Zwift file, uh, and, and then you go into your Zwift file and there's a workouts file. You put that ZWO into the Zwift workouts file place, and you'll actually see some other preloaded workouts in there as well uh, that Zwift is holding on to, and uh, that's where you put your custom workouts. And all I did was go into the game and uh, push workout and I got to the front load and I was able to find my custom workouts. I can actually show you guys that real quick here. We'll go ahead and uh, push E and that actually brings me to my select my workout screen. And you can see all the workouts that I've actually, I've made a bunch of new ones and just never named them. I designed them in here. This one, as you can see that I'm on right now, was created by Greg here, the Dan Martin Mixer, via Training Peaks, the author, you can see that's in there. Um, you can also see a few others that he has that we're uh, getting ready for in future weeks. So um, we will next week, what's happening next week again? Uh, next week is a time trial specific interval set. So it's, uh, it's more constant power, but slowly increasing the power as we lower the duration of the effort so it's uh, again incremental amounts of accumulating lactate okay gotcha right on right on all right greg i think greg's got to get to uh the tour you're going to the tour of colorado and uh he's got I'm a lot going on the next couple of days so i'm super excited for you. I hope you have some uh, great racing man like make sure to everybody make sure to go follow up for this racing see what he's up to because uh he's got some hard racing going on in the breckenridge area over the next uh, couple of weeks, couple of days, I believe. But we'll be following for sure. Appreciate the workout so much today, Greg, and uh, have a great oh, race mate. over the next week. You did fantastic. It was, uh, it was great watching you. And uh, no, thanks for having me. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next week. We've got something new, and um, we'll see you. Uh, yeah, in about a week, Nate. Yeah, next week Wednesday. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, Coach Andy. We'll see right you on, next mate. week. All right, everybody, so much. that was Greg Henderson. He's going to take off and get over to the uh, to Colorado. He's got uh, some racing to do. We did the uh, Dan Martin Mixer today. Some over-under threshold efforts. Absolutely killer. Uh, as you can see, my heart rate was pushed up into the 180s uh, over and over again. Had a really great ride. If you'd like to check out this workout, of course, you can head on over to coachendy.com. Uh, and find all the workouts over there, or, or, or you can also download this specific workout to test it out over at Zwift Community Live's Facebook. And we will see you guys next week for the next Coach Andy workout. And then Thursday, we're right back with more of our race coverage. Thanks everybody for tuning in. And uh, as always, ride on. <laughs>